I'm just a poor struggling lawyer and the law library doesn't open until 9 so I've got a little bit of time to kill. I figure I'd go over this video I just watched by Max Millionaire. I watched the video and I'm like, huh, okay, black man, blah, 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 left keys in his car. Well, that's really interesting, but it was in Sacramento and that's really what drew me to it. Now, obviously you can watch the video yourself. You can watch the video yourself. Uh, there's some issues that I have with it. First of all, the first video starts off showing the uh, rest in progress. So there's the cop arresting him. Second video, when the cop initially approaches his body camera, he has just turned his body camera on when he reaches into the car and turns it off. Let's see. Now for the body cam. So he's walking up, he's, he's pointing at somebody, signaling, he reaches in the car, turns it off. He's just turned his body camera on. Apparently it takes a little bit of time from the time they turn the body camera on to the time it starts recording. Or maybe he turned... It was something like, uh, maybe he turns it on. It, it's always recording, but it it only saves the previous 15 or something seconds, and you turn it on, and you have the previous 15 seconds of video, but it doesn't start recording until you actually hit the start button or something. I I'm not sure exactly how they work. I'm not a cop. Uh, but what he, what he does is he films himself t reaching into the car, turning off the camera. You can see him interacting with this guy. He then walks back to his police car. And the audio kicks on somewhere around here. And then he proceeds back up to the guy. He asks for his ID. He tells the guy that he's um, that he that the crime he committed was leaving his car running and unattended, etc. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is I'm just trying to to point out propaganda. And you can believe whatever you want. You can believe that this cop was racist, and that's fine. That's your belief. You can believe that the cop is totally justified. That's fine. That's your belief. I can't do anything about your beliefs. I don't really, honestly, I don't care about your beliefs. But when you present your beliefs to me as facts, then I'm going to have a bit of an issue because is what is what I'm trained to do is I'm trained to look at at BS and say that's BS. I'm look I'm trained to look at the statute, find the elements of the statute, and see the BS for the BS and look at the statute for the actual things I'm intending to find. So this says, on Friday, May 4th, 2018, Sacramento police arrested a black man. Why are we throwing black men in there? Obviously, it's for race baiting. He's setting the stage to make this a racist encounter. For leaving his car idling, that is correct, momentarily while he popped into a 7-Eleven to get a snack with his girlfriend. Extraneous language, it's fluff, it's, it's there to try to minimize it. This is minimizing language. It was just momentarily. He just popped in. This occurred at 1 or 1199 43rd Avenue. That is correct, which is predominantly a black neighborhood in South Sacramento. Why is he throwing in this predominantly a black neighborhood? Obviously, there must be a racist element to this. Now, you don't see any racist elements in it, so he has to infer them. He has to, he has to claim them in this statement. Of course, that's not what the cop was originally berating the man for. Of course it wasn't, he says, because it's obvious, because we have nothing on video. And obviously, the people who are arrested never have a reason to lie about what the original encounter was for, or to ignore or misrepresent facts or law. Obviously, they're always in full agreement when they have, in fact, committed a crime. And berating, again, that, that language is designed to show the cop is just being a jerk, it is propaganda. Now, you can believe he is or isn't, and that's fine. That's up to you. But this is, this is propaganda language. But only came up with this charge after Craig Williams, age 40, okay, was dismissive of the cop's complaint. So if the cop is alleging that you've committed a crime and he's going to arrest you for it, then... So, so cops have, to have discretion. If the cop walked up and said, hey, you're, you're violating this ordinance, you need to turn off your car, you can't leave it running, and then you're like, yeah, whatever, dickhead. Well, then, because the cop has the discretion on whether or not to ticket you or arrest you or whatever, you're making the cop's decision to just give you a warning much harder for him to make. Cops are people, too. If you treat me like a jerk, I'm going to treat you like a jerk. If you treat a cop like a jerk, the cop's going to treat you like a jerk. That's just, that's just psychology. 
and disrespected his authority and dismissive language of the cop. What was the cop's original complaint? By, by calling it a complaint, you're minimizing it. What was the charge the cop was originally approaching Craig Williams about is a different thing. Was it the rap music playing in, with the car window rolled down? Or it was the rap music. Again, this assumes facts not in evidence. And then maybe it was playing fuck the police. This is uh, a leading. You're just, you're just trying to. You're just throwing it out there hoping it'll stick. So, but notice that his narrative isn't very cohesive here. Uh, is it because the guy was black? Is it because the guy was disrespectful? Or was it because of the music? There's, there's three narratives rolling here. In the surveillance video from 7-Eleven, which there is no audio on, you can see the cop walk past Nova belonging to the victim when he suddenly stops and returns to the side of the car while beckoning the man with his fingers to come outside. Now, why would he do that? If, for example, he saw the car was unattended, he may do that. By the way, this is the actual ordinance. It's 10.36.090, leaving the ignition key in an unattended vehicle prohibited. It is unlawful in a misdemeanor for any purpose or for any person driving or in charge of a motor vehicle to permit it to stand unattended in any public place or any used or new car lot or private or public parking lot without first stopping the engine, locking the engine or locking the ignition and removing the ignition key from the vehicle. So there's three elements that you have to have. Well, you have to be a person. You have to be uh, have a vehicle that is located in the city of Sacramento um, on, in a public place or parking lot, etc., so those are, those are elements. And then it has to have all three of these. It has to be, you have to have failed to stop the engine. You have to have failed to lock the ignition. And you have to have failed to remove the ignition key from the vehicle. Any one of those things by itself would not put you in violation of this ordinance. You have to do all three. You have to, and you have to do all three of those in one of the listed places in Sacramento. And you have to be a person driving or in charge of the vehicle to be in violation of this ordinance. So there's, those are the elements that you have to look for. So maybe he saw, maybe when he was walking past the car, he saw it was left unattended. All of a sudden it was then in violation of this ordinance. And thus he, would, he could, should, and did deal with it. It's the, it is the role of the police. It is their job to enforce city ordinances, whether you agree with them or not, whether you think it's worth it or not. That is, that is why they hire the police. They hire cities, hire police officers, not only to enforce state law, but also to enforce city ordinances. When the man comes outside to see what the big emergency was, again, this is dismissive language. It's propaganda. The cop illegally enters the man's car. The cop does not illegally enter the man's car. There is a crime. The cop can enter the vehicle to turn it off. And he just reaches in. He opens the car door. He reaches in and turns off the vehicle. Now, he says it's in violation of his Fourth Amendment rights, to which I ask you, was it a search or a seizure to turn off the vehicle? I would submit to you, it is neither a search nor a seizure. One could argue that it was a seizure. I don't believe it was. But remember, there is a reasonableness requirement to the Fourth Amendment analysis. Was it reasonable for the cop to simply turn off the ignition? He didn't take the key. He didn't, he didn't sit down in the seat. He did the, the minimum it took to stop the the ongoing misdemeanor turns off the car shutting off the offensive music we don't know that there was offensive music playing that is not in evidence it's not apparent from the video that there was offensive music maybe there was but again we're just assuming it and even if the cop says later that there was there was terrible music playing we don't i mean again there may have been I don't really care. I'm not going to watch the whole thing to find out. Um, I, I know what I know what I needed to know, and what I needed to know was evidence from this point to this point, where the cop reaches in, turns it off. There, that was the crime. That's all. That's all we needed. So literally, all the rest of this is propaganda. I do want to point out, however, that the fine of $47.50 for it is incorrect. This is a misdemeanor. Ah, misdemeanor. This is California, or I'm sorry, Sacramento City Code 1.28.020, criminal sanctions. 
Uh, any person convicted of a misdemeanor under provisions of this code shall be punishable by a fine of not more than $1,000 or not less than $500. So you're going to be punished from $500 to $1,000 or by imprisonment in a county jail for a period not exceeding six months, or by fine and imprisonment. So there you go. Uh, he could have been, it's 500 to $1,000, not $47.50, and, and a potential jail sentence. Uh, I would also like to say that all the uh, talking about uh, the cop decides to go hands-on to detain the man, uh, it was an arrest, not a detention. And why do you need to narrate this? It was in the video. He says, but isn't what? Okay, so then uh, he also says something about it's a 50-year-old. Oh, uh, the man refuses. He pulls out, his, out of his ass some obscure 50-year-old law against leaving the keys in your car. Um, that's All of that is immaterial and irrelevant. It wasn't 50 years old. It was uh, altered from the previous version in 1993. So... It is not 50 years old, but even if it was, how old are the statutes against murder? Those are those have been those have been valid statutes in California ever since California was a state, and probably before that it was probably there were probably statutes against murder even preceding that, but they were codified in like 1872, I think. So yeah, they are much older than 50 years, and so the obscurity of it isn't relevant the how old the law is isn't relevant and it's not about leaving your keys in the car remember there were three elements that you needed um, the stopping of the engine locking the ignition and removing the ignition key from the vehicle so this was just a little a little public service announcement on propaganda um, i'm not trying to say i'm not trying to change your opinion about what this officer did you are free to agree or disagree with his actions. You are free to agree or disagree as to whether or not this law should exist and or be enforced. You can agree or disagree as to the uh, amount of potential sanctions that you face in violating this ordinance. I None of those really matter to me, honestly. Um, you're free to have your opinion. I am all about you having your opinion and expressing it. My point in this video is simply to point out that this is propaganda and you should be aware that this is propaganda because people are trying to change your views of reality. Anyway, thanks for watching. Happy auditing and have a great day.